Welcome to our May tea time, uh, this time from Portugal. So we're moving to summer. This is why we're moving south. And I am very happy to welcome today Susana Costa Pereira from the Creative Europe Desk Portugal. Thank you so much for joining me today, Susana. Thank you so much for inviting me, Anna. Very, very happy to have you here with us. Um, I know that you have a lot of work on your desk because the new Creative Europe calls are right around the corner. So it's even nicer that you took the time to uh, talk with me today. But we're actually not going to talk about the Creative Europe program. At least we're not going to talk about it um, a lot. But what we want to focus about is Portugal and uh, what's happening for the young audience um, in Portugal. But before we start talking about that, I have to ask, the most important question of the day what are you drinking and what does your cup look like uh, so i am drinking lemon balm tea i am a tea fan uh one of the few portuguese who is uh, not a coffee fan i'm a tea fan and uh yeah this is my uh, the cup that i bought when i first started working with creative europe actually uh yeah so that it could have and it has the right size rather big has the right size for, you know, going to your desk and having your cup and not having to go to the kitchen all the time to refill it. So I brought it back home when I started in, you know, in this pandemic uh, world, uh, working from home. That's, uh, yeah. that's a very good story. Actually, also my Kids Regio cup is huge because I also <laughs> prefer tea. And I think it doesn't make sense to have a small cup with tea. Tea only makes sense in a big cup. So um, I'm totally with you on that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so let's start talking about Portugal, the reason why we are here today. So what mm. is the, the overall atmosphere for, for young audience activities, content in Portugal? I, I don't think a lot of um, our colleagues in Europe know what's really going on. So enlighten us. What's going on in Portugal? I will try. So thank you so much for, for inviting me. And thank you so much also because it gave me the opportunity to really uh, research and, uh, um, uh, and find out what's going on uh, in fact, in, in Portugal. So um, we, we definitely have the, the um, acknowledged the importance of working with all young audiences. Uh, that's, that's a fact. But however, we, we, we don't invest so much in creation and, and production, but uh, mainly on the end of the, the value chain, on uh, exhibition and uh, uh, film education activities and audience development activities. Uh, also uh, via the contractual um, the contract that that the state has with the national broadcaster uh, to exhibit uh, cultural and uh, cultural works uh, cultural AV works um, of course this translates uh, from um, our funding uh, opportunities uh, in, in Portugal. Most of our productions are funded by the state, by the film agency, and the film agency doesn't have any funding opportunities specifically targeting uh, um, AV works for young audiences, um, nor have any um, positive discrimination towards uh, films uh, for young audiences, but they do have uh, some uh, funding schemes within the 20 something funding schemes, they have some funding schemes for audience development and film education. And uh, of course, this translates in a, a, a bigger number of activities working on, on this uh, on this side. Besides this, this uh, initiatives, film education initiatives that are, are being organized for with, with some associations, we also have the National Plan for Cinema that uh, exists for quite some years now. Uh, and recently, three years ago, actually, the, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Culture launched a joint task force and gave the name National Plan for the Arts, which of course includes uh, cinemas. And this this action, uh, this task force has been doing a great job, I may, I may add. And uh, just last week, they launched this platform, this uh, streaming platform to facilitate the access to AV works from, from schools. And that they are developing all this work with, with schools and teachers and, uh, and so on. So this is also very interesting. Of course, adding to this possibilities, 
uh, there's also the funding from Creative Europe. We're not going to focus on Creative Europe, but uh, but again, I have to stress that we have some projects, uh, good projects funded from uh, by Creative Europe. Uh, to start uh, with CNET, the project that I think most of you will know, and that it's in the third edition, and it has now a Portuguese leader, uh, um, which is the Portuguese Cinematheque and also a Portuguese partner called Os Filhos de Lumière, uh, which is the Lumière Sons uh, in English, and that they've been working since 2000, the years 2000, doing an amazing job on, on, uh, on audience development and, you know, the, the, for young audiences, working with schools, working with, with all kinds of organizations, with teachers and the students, and they, they actually have three projects funded by Creative Europe. So this moving cinema, Shortcut and uh, CNET. So um, there's this all kind of uh, activities going on in, in Portugal on this end. That's so good to hear that uh, there's so much happening on that front, but that leaves on the end of the value chain still the cinema. So the, the place of our heart that is um, really neglected at the moment and we really want to go back there. So um, is there anything happening there for, for cinemas for young audience? Yes, definitely. I mean, we don't have any specific uh, venues dedicated to uh, young audiences, but we do have the work of the, again, the Portuguese Cinemateca. They have this uh, initiative called Cinemateca Junior, and they have this specific venue where they uh, they screen uh, films for children and young audiences, and they also work with a number of other organizations uh, in this in this department, which is really really nice. Um, besides uh, the Cinemateca, uh, I, I must stress the role of festivals. Um, Portuguese festivals, I think, all of them. Uh, probably uh, doing a very good job on on uh, with an educational program and uh, targeting audiences, young audiences in the in the uh, and having an initiative that really go throughout the year. They are not only focused within you know those 10, 12 years of uh, 12 years of days of the festival. They they go along <clears throat> the entire year working with with the, with schools, namely with schools. Uh, just to, to name a few, we have a Play Fest, which is an inter the international festival that is exclusively dedicated for young audiences. Uh, it's called Children and Youth uh, Festival, and normally takes place in February, but this year it will take place in June and July. So stay tuned. Uh, and they've been there only; they are also, uh, already in their eighth edition, so they're not that new. They're doing a very good job and working with Cinemateca. This is one of the the, the other uh, projects that Cinemateca uh, works with, and they they dedicate they work with the films dedicated to young <clears throat> audiences up until 13 years old. And then uh, Indy Lisboa. Uh, also has this uh, very interesting section in Porto, actually, called Indy Junior, and uh, so the, that's the, and that's it happens in Porto in a, in a, in a, in a specific time in, in a year. But they again they continue to have uh, activities throughout the years with with schools. Also on the animation side, you know, Indy Lisboa is a, a generalistic uh, festival. They have shorts, they have long features, they have documentary, they have whatever. Um, and then you have uh, on a more uh, specific um, festivals, you have Monstra Lisboa, which is the International Animated Film of Lisboa. They have this uh, specific session for young children called Monstrinha, and they develop activities such as screenings, workshops uh, with teachers and pedagogues uh, um, for young audiences. And also uh, to mention just a few uh, fest, um, new directors, new films festival, which happens in Espinho. Uh, so throughout the country have these wonderful festivals. Uh, they also have some very interesting activities throughout the festival. They even have this prize that has a jury comprised only of young children and uh, youngsters. Uh, and it's really, really interesting what they do. Uh, been able to experience uh, firsthand. But just to just to name a few shorts uh, from Vila do Conde also have uh, activities uh, throughout the years. So very, very exciting there. Um, but but coming back to 
um, commercial exhibition uh, and cinemas um, in Portugal, uh, when you look at the numbers of admissions uh, in, in cinemas, animation stands out. It doesn't have to be, and, and in, in this case, animation films um, targeting ages uh, with a rating age of six years old and plus. So for young, uh, young children. And the last years, I looked at the numbers from 2017 to uh, 2021. We had, um, in 2017, five animated films in the top 10, uh, be it that uh, one in the second and then the, the other in the third position. Uh, in 2018, again, two films with the first two positions. Uh, in 2019, five films, one of which in the first position, and then 2020 was this a typical year. But um, for 2021, the information we have so far that we have one uh, um, animated film in third in third place so far, which is uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Let's see, let's see how it goes. But um, there's there's an interest. There's there's a possibility here. Uh, with with the films for for children, uh, and those those animated films that you just um, mentioned within the numbers are those American productions or? Yes, they are American productions. All these uh, these films are the big uh, American USA uh, productions. We have uh, other films, uh, uh, namely Portuguese and uh, Portuguese co-production um, uh, released uh, in Portugal. We 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 released a couple of hundreds uh, of, of of films uh, in this last in the last years. But these are the ones that are standing out as far as as, as far as admission uh, admissions are are concerned. Yes. So, so yeah, it's a pity that um, that it's only American productions and no national productions. So apparently, there's a hunger uh, in the in, in the audience to actually see movies. So why not have uh, Portuguese movies? So what does the Portuguese production landscape look like? I know that there has been 2006. There has been one children's film produced in in Portugal. I looked up the name. It's in English called Behind the Clouds. But since then, nothing nothing really happens. So if people are now watching European children's film producers who think, ah, oh, I always loved Portugal um, and we should do something, maybe a co-production, what is what what are you what do you have to do in Portugal to go into production? What opportunities are there? Okay, first to know that you will be welcome. Anyone who wants to come to Portugal to co-produce, we are used to co-productions, we like co-productions, and we have some very good opportunities. Starting with the film uh, agency, uh, ICA, uh, they have, as I said before, 20-something uh, um, funding schemes, uh, possibilities, and uh, a lot on co-production. Portuguese has uh, 12 bilat bilateral co-production agreements, um, uh, like with, with Spain, Germany, Italy, and and um, and France, and then again with Israel and India, and uh, also Morocco, Mozambique, Angola, Brazil, and uh, we are in conversations with with uh, China, and. On top of this, we have the, of course, we, we are part of the European Convention, Convention of Co-Production. So this means that you would have funding opportunities if you want to co-produce with, uh, with a Portuguese uh, producer. Um, also, we have a very competitive uh, financial incentive for you to come, for anyone who wants to come to film uh, in, in, in Portugal. Uh, we have uh, um, a cash rebate of up to 30%, which is very interesting because uh, it, it, it's paid in installments. You don't have to finish the entire production and so to, so to have the money back, they will give you, they will pay you in installments. And I was told, and it is advertised, that they give the, the, the answer for your application in uh, 20 days. So all you will need to do is to spend, if you want to co-produce a uh, um, uh, fiction film or an animation film, you have to spend 500,000 euros in Portugal. Uh, if it's a documentary, 250,000. And if it's a post-production, 
and it's also 250,000. And know that you don't need to have your company, uh, your vehicle company already established to make the application. You can register in the ICA database and then uh, apply. And uh, what you need to do is that uh, before the beginning, on once you receive the, the answer, uh, before the beginning of the, of the principal photography, you need to have, uh, of course, this uh, vehicle company or be working with a Portuguese uh, co-producer. So there's there's a lot of possibilities here. And also there's a team that can help you through all this. If you visit the site of our Portugal Film Commission, you'll see that you'll have an entire team that will help you uh, uh, through the funding to act at least identifying the funding possibilities and also with any any issue that you may have with where to film, how to get the authorizations and licenses and so on. So I would say we have pretty good conditions to come to, 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 to Portugal. That sounds good. And I mean, who doesn't want to go to Portugal, obviously? Um, so maybe with this talk, we can motivate some people going there. But let's talk about future plans that two of us have maybe um, at the end of our talk. And maybe let's um, continue with television. You already mentioned that in the beginning when you talked about the oval atmosphere. Is there a special um, broadcaster dedicated to children or how is that organized in Portugal? Well, in, uh, regarding the TV panorama, what we have, we, we have the, um, the national broadcaster who has a, co a, co a contractual uh, uh, concession uh, with, with, um, with, the, with the government, of course. And uh, they do have, uh, they don't have a special, a channel especially dedicated to children, but in their second channel, the RTP2, they have uh, in the last year, in 2019, according to the regulating authority, they had 34.9% of exhibition time dedicated to young audiences, and of which 68% uh, uh, is... Um, 68% of the number of programs or shows that they that they that they exhibit in on, on television. So this is um, this is part of the panorama. Then you have this is regarding free TV. Okay, yeah. so then uh, and uh, regarding the private. Uh, um, broadcasters we have tvi with six percent of uh, uh, time dedicated to young audiences and sic that uh, has uh, four percent uh, dedicated however sic has a cable cable channel totally dedicated to uh, youngsters uh, mainly so it's uh, sic kids uh, so this is a subscription uh, channel that is totally dedicated to children and um, also to mention that our national uh, broadcaster, RTP, launched uh, a VOD platform called ZigZag. And ZigZag is the label of, the, of this uh, young audience time of exhibition. It has been for a long, long time. Every, any, uh, every Portuguese knows this uh, ZigZag. And they launched this VOD platform, which is perfect specifically for, for these audiences. So has this uh, uh, very interesting program. They have fiction, but they also have, for instance, uh, a journal that is made for and by uh, young people, which is really, really interesting. And part of the contents are free uh, for now. The contents are free for, for, for now, at least. I don't know how, they, how it's going to evolve. Also to mention that, um, uh, zero in comportamento, the association that I mentioned before, uh, so zero in behavior, they also have this platform, this online platform that is uh, partly dedicated to, to young audiences. Uh, it's called uh, Little Films. And uh, it's, uh, you have part of the content is free and part of the content is subscription, subscription uh, content. So this is more or less the, the panorama in the, as far as TV is concerned. Of course, and on cable, then you have, this is to mention the Portuguese initiatives and the Portuguese broadcasters, of course, the, in the, in the general, uh, you have all the others that, you know, Cartoon Network and, uh, and uh, Disney and uh, all Nickelodeon. The, uh, Nickelodeon, and, yeah. depending oh. on your service provider. 
but that that's a good overview you actually also answered my question about vod platforms so you already told about the um about the uh, broadcasting vod zigzag uh, platform and also about the other portuguese one actually for everyone who's not able to speak portuguese like me uh, we're going to put links to everything that susanna mentioned under the youtube video so that you can click and understand what the names of the institutions were if you want to have a look at that or if you want to cooperate with them um, in the future uh, so susanna you gave a perfect overview about so many things um, happening in portugal and um, the only thing that is not happening so much in portugal like we mentioned earlier is actually production for the young audience um, and we both got to know each other to let the audience in on how we actually met. We got to know each other because there was this project under the European presidency that first ha Germany had last year and Portugal is having the presidency at the moment. So our huge plan was to do something in Portugal actually in the <laughs> beginning of the year, which we had to cancel. Um, so I would be very happy to uh, keep our plans going, to come to Portugal, to bring some European colleagues and to start raising awareness for production for the young audience. Um, if you would still have us in, in Portugal. That's the, that's the perfect plan. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, yes, of course, very, very interested. I think we can do, you, you do such a great job uh, and, 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 and um, also in promoting these possibilities and these even, even business possibilities for, for producers. And I think that's maybe that's what is also missing in, uh, in Portugal to create awareness for these opportunities that are going on in the world for young audiences. Because the importance as I as I mentioned, is well acknowledged. Um, we just need to go further. So, can't wait to welcome you in Lisbon Perfect. or any other any other region or in Porto. Porto, that, Porto if you know, Porto, in for Europe, instance, yes. for the junior, why not? That would be lovely. Yes, but I think what you just said is something that is very interesting. Um, a fact that we also addressed in, in prior talks with other countries is this point of business opportunities. You can only really convince the industry to be active for the young audience if they also see the business opportunity. If you want to have um, high quality content, so let's work on that. Let's um, have Portuguese producers believe in the business opportunity opportunity of um, young audience content and thank you so much again for your time it was lovely talking thank to you, you. thank bye you bye. so much and thank you for listening bye-bye thank you everyone for joining Susanna and me for our talk about Portugal today we hope you heard some new things and might be inspired to explore the country a bit more I for sure will for the next tea time we go east again to the country that will take over the presidency of the European Council from Portugal in July. I am thrilled to welcome Živa Jurancic from Slovenia. Živa works as Film Education and Young Audience Program Manager at Kino Dvor in Ljubljana. As usual, the session will be online on the fourth Thursday next month, which is June 24th. See you there.